June Doherty's Washington Huskies are on a roll. They've won four of their last five games, a streak which has taken them to within a game of the Pac-10 lead. The Huskies have topped the 90-point mark in their last two outings, their best two shooting performances of the year. Today, the Huskies face the league leaders from Arizona State. The Sun Devils have won seven straight. The last team to beat them, the Huskies. It's time to heat it up in the doghouse. A beautiful afternoon along the Seattle skyline. You'd almost think it was spring for good here in the Northwest, although we still know better. But there is still plenty of time left in the basketball season. It's a big matchup today, though, from the Bank of America Arena at Heck Gibbonson Pavilion. A battle with first place on the line in the conference as the 23rd ranked Sun Devils of Arizona State come to Seattle to face the Washington Huskies. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Pickett. We welcome you to Seattle and an important game in the Pac-10 race this week, marking the start of the second half of the season. And Washington now with a chance to claim a share of first place in the Pac-10 standings pending the outcome of today's game. The Sun Devils come in with a one game lead over the Huskies and Stanford. And Washington moved into that second place tie in part with a victory over the Arizona Wildcats Thursday night, knocking off number 22 ranked Arizona. And they did it with a 98 point outburst, the most points scored by a team in Pac-10 conference conference play this season. Why? Because of the long ball. 16 three-pointers made a Pac-10 conference record as the Huskies wound up shooting 55% from behind the stripe in the victory over Arizona. Former Husky Elise Woodward joins us once again. Elise, this team really red hot now. Two great scoring performances in the last two games against Washington State and Arizona, and a couple of freshmen really stepping to the fore for Washington. Well, the great turnaround in Washington's program from last year to this year has been because of the benefit of two incoming freshmen, Juliana Mendiola, their point guard, and Andrea Lalum. Juliana, one of the best in the Pac-10. She's second on the Huskies in scoring, first in rebounding, and first in assists. She does everything for this team. And Lalum coming in, she's taken over the starting center position and has been solid in Pac-10 play. Increased her numbers. She averages double figures in Pac-10 play. And she does not play like a freshman. She is not intimidated. She can step out and hit the outside side shot. She's an all-around good player. This is a great Arizona State team, though, in the polls for the first time in nine years, and it's the first time they've ever won seven straight Pac-10 games. Talk about centers. They've got perhaps the best in the conference in Melody Johnson. Well, Melody Johnson is tough on the blocks. If she establishes position, she is money. When she gets the ball down low, she's strong, physical, likes to take contact, but that is her weakness as well. When she gets fouled and goes to the line, you can see just 52% last time against the Huskies. They tried the hack -a shack method. She was four for 17 from the line, and the Huskies won by four. If she just makes half her free throws, Arizona State has a shot in that game. Yes, Melody was out of tune in that contest in Tempe. The Huskies go for the season sweep against Arizona State, and they'll try to earn a share of first place in the Pac-10 Conference. They'll also have to shut down an outstanding freshman for the Sun Devils, Northwest standout Betsy Boardman. Meanwhile, the Huskies and Lori Payne hope to continue their great outside shooting. We'll be back with the starters right after this. A lot of kids in attendance today brought their basketballs with them, hopeful for a little post-game shoot-around as we welcome you back to the Bank of America Arena. Fans climbing to their feet once again as they get set to introduce the starting lineup for Washington. First, though, we'll take a starting look at the Arizona State Five. Sun Devils coming in 16 and six overall. They've won seven straight. Freshman Betsy Boardman, we told you about. She, Johnson, and Sian Carvalho will team up along the front line. And in the backcourt for Arizona State, a lot of experience in Amanda Levins and senior Natalie Tucker. Charlie Turner Thorne, a former graduate assistant here at the University of Washington, now in her fifth season as the head coach at Arizona State. Eighth as a head coach overall with a mark of 101 and 112. Mark Lewis, Kim Gervasoni, and Laura Hughes are her assistant coaches. And the starting lineup for Washington across the front. Lori Payne, freshman Andrea Lalam, and Leanne Sheets giving the Huskies 6'2", 6'4", and 6'0 across the front. Juliana Mendiola and Megan Franza will start in the backcourt for Washington. June Doherty, her fifth season. Huskies 14 and six overall, winning four out of their last five. 12th season overall as a head coach. Sonny Smallwood, Mike Doherty, and Shimmy Gray, the assistant coaches for Washington. 
And Elise, one of the other big matchups to watch today, pits two of the top scorers in the Pac-10. Well, it's hard to imagine we haven't mentioned either one of these two. Big time scorers in the Pac-10, both in the top 10. But last time, watch for these two to come unglued in this game last game. Neither one had a very good outing. 10 points for Levins, 13 points for Franza. But these girls can score. Let's take a look at what these two teams have to do to come up with a win today in Seattle. Well, the Huskies have got to continue being hot from the three-point line. They shoot a lot of them. When they make them, they're a very dangerous team. When they don't, as you can imagine, they're not very good. Arizona State has to get out perimeter-wise. They run a 2-3 zone. They've got to get to the shooters. I, I imagine they're going to go mostly man-to-man -to, -man to start, and then they've got to get that inside scoring presence from six foot two Melody Johnson. That perimeter defense is big. Arizona State is eighth in the conference in three-point field goal percentage. So they've got to shut Washington down there. And as Elise said, they come out man-to-man -to, -man to start off with. Payne taking her time looking at Levens inside for Sheets. Now Lalam, who's got great range, working against Johnson, but throws it away. Well, Arizona State's man-to-man -man defense is all about pressure. They deny passes out on the wings. It's very similar to USC's defense, as we mentioned, Charlie Turner Thorne, an assistant here under Chris Gobrecht. She uses a lot of those basic fundamentals of pressure defense in the half-court man-to-man. Boardman inside, called for the walk, shuffled the feet. Tom Dubas making that call. He, Mary Watford, and Janine Pence, our officiating crew. Mandiola, a little bit of pressure from Tucker. You see the quick hedges as well, but Carvalho returning as soon as she can to get up with Sheets. Franza left alone from outside, couldn't get the initial three-point launch. Sheets trying to save it, stepped out of bounds. And at least that puts Charlie Turner Thorne's heart in her throat when she sees Megan spotting up like that wide open. Well, it's, it's pick your poison with the Huskies. If, if you leave them, you want teams to shoot from the three-point line because it's the low percentage shot, but not if it's the Washington Huskies because they, they put up so many of them and they can make them as well. Johnson inside against Lalam, got isolated, couldn't hit. Carvalho's save goes to Mendiola. Washington looking to run. Geo, tough pass there to Payne. Got around Boardman on the wide open look. Very difficult shot there for Lori Payne going full seat speed in the fast break. Takes one dribble and goes up with the pull up jumper. That's a tough shot for the sophomore. Little pressure on Tucker with the ball. She's good at handling it. Not a big scoring threat though. The minute we say that, of course, she drives baseline. Trying to find Johnson now. Kicks it back out instead for Boardman. Johnson shuffled the feet. Oh, they're going to call an offensive foul as well when she leaned in. At least we saw the Huskies double her up. They'd love to do that as much as possible. Well, the Huskies cannot guard Johnson one-on-one. -on -one. You see the play in Lalem behind six foot four, but Sheets comes over to help. They double down, and they just cause Melody Johnson a little bit frustrated. Goes off with the elbow and picks up the offensive foul. Boardman pressuring Franza outside. Lalem behind the stripe, thought for a second. A lot of side-to-side -side swing by the Huskies. Tough shot there on the spin for Mendiola. Sheets a nice offensive board. Now makes her move on Carvalho and left it a little short. Batted by Mendiola to Sheets. Another follow. That's vintage Washington Huskies. Take the shot if you've got it. If not, crash the offensive boards. They lead the Pac-10 in offensive putbacks. And you see a good reason why right there. Leanne Sheets hitting the boards hard. Boardman trying to step in, tough pass, good job by Johnson, and Levins is left alone. Franza the long rebound, Washington with numbers if they push it. Now Mendiola left alone, she'll fly in on Johnson. Got intimidated by the defender, Carvalho got bumped by Sheets. On the fast break, Melody Johnson already has one foul. Juliana Mendiola should have taken it hard, drawn the contact from Johnson. Johnson knows she has a foul, makes a smart play, just gets out of the way. And Mendiola didn't adjust. She could have just gone up for the easy two. Leah Combs in the lineup for Arizona State. She comes in early for Carvalho. Combs started much of that season at the position, and Carvalho took over five games ago. We saw the cold shooting for ASU. Rainey Crisp also in. She has the ball now. Levens, good stutter step, finds Crisp behind the stripe, and another poorly taken shot there. Well, Crisp is in there mainly for defensive purposes. Outside shooting is not 
what she, her, her strength of her game is. Payne with a great step to the baseline. She has four early. Huskies open with a quick half dozen. Tucker trying to lob. Combs got in behind the defense. They were so concerned about Johnson. Couldn't put it in, and then a follow-up foul. Is it Combs or is it Johnson? It is Combs. Well, Andrea Lalam just doing a good job using her body down low, keeping the defenders on her back, and using that big 6'4 frame to take advantage and pick up the foul. At least this Arizona State team is coming off a tough win in Pullman Thursday night. You see the Huskies have doubled them up in rebounds already. They only won by two on a late basket by Johnson, and they're off to a slow start again today. Payne well short. Somebody must have adjusted the rims in between games. Well, she just moved to the other <laughs> side of the floor, and maybe the basket moved. It's the really lighting. <laughs> Well, every game in this Pac-10 conference on the road, it's difficult to pick up wins on the road this season. Every team is so competitive top to bottom in this league that you know, to get a sweep on the road is very difficult, and that's Arizona State's challenge this weekend. Levin's trying to go in on Sheets, stepped on the baseline. Great fundamental defense there, Elise. You preach to kids always, don't give up the baseline. She was right there. Well, good job by the Huskies moving their feet, cutting off the baseline, just Sheets moving over there. She's a big girl, six foot two, a post. And then you got the guard, Levens, that should use her speed to attack, but she shows she's got quick speed too, just sets her foot on the baseline, does not allow her to take that move to the hoop. Third turnover already against ASU. Jill Pimley in the lineup for Washington, handling the ball now. Cheryl Sorensen also in as she looks inside, trying to find someone. Sheets pinning Combs to the outside. Great entry pass by Lala. Oh, that was textbook basketball. Beautiful move by Leanne. Sheets established position in the middle of the key with a nice fake and then just spun around to the right. Johnson will go to the line. Gets that low position we talked about. The Huskies defensively in the transition have got to get back. Do not allow Melody Johnson to set up on the block. They have to beat her down the floor and make sure she can't set up. Make her set up over up at the high post position. If she gets it low, unless you foul her, like we mentioned, she struggles at the line. She's unstoppable when she gets that ball. Johnson, a transfer from the University of Colorado, and talking to Charlie Turner Thorne, she said Melody came in with the mental image that she was a 50% free throw shooter, and we've been trying to work on that ever since. Well, free throws are so mental. If you get up to the line, that's an easy shot. You should be able to make it. But with fans shooting and the pressure you put on yourself, all of a sudden you get a little shaky and they won't go down for you. One out of two, she's right at the percentage. You see Kelly O'Neill there. She's checked into the Husky lineup. We have substitutes both ways we'll tell you about when we return. But a great move there by Leanne Sheets. She and Payne have four apiece for Washington. Welcome back to Seattle. Carly Halpany in the lineup for Washington as Andrea Lalam is on the bench. A little pressure here from Arizona State. They've also brought Brett Leonard into the lineup. She'll work in the backcourt with Crisp. Transition back into a match zone. Himley, oh, great passing around the horn and a wide open look for O'Neal. That's textbook offense against the zone. Quick passes, get it inside, get it outside. You're going to be wide open, and they nail the jump shot. The offense off the bench in the form of O'Neal. She's been a consistent scorer this year. Crisp looking inside as the Sun Devils go without Johnson for the first time today. All of a sudden, the middle doesn't look quite as threatening. So Levens behind a screen from Carvalho. Great move by Levens. The pump fake takes one dribble, goes up strong. She is a scorer. You see she has a good jump shot. The ball goes over her head and it's very difficult to block. First field goal of the game for the Sun Devils. They're now one for six from the floor. The Huskies at 50% early. Mendiola trying to add to the total. Well, you can see the confidence in Mendiola's face when she gets four of six against Arizona on Thursday. She's feeling it. She was in a slump for a while. She broke out in a big time way on Thursday. And that perimeter defense you were talking about, we're not seeing much of it so far. Well, in that zone defense, you can't get to all the shooters that Washington has to offer. You're, you're just hoping that it doesn't go in when they when they throw up those three. See the Huskies just moving around in the zone. You can't get to all the people at once. You just are guarding this particular zone. Not a player. Nobody can guard three people in one area. And you see Washington taking advantage of it on the baseline shot. Kelly O'Neill whistled for a personal there the last time. 
Third team foul against Washington. Inside, Carvalho chases it down. Levens, good job by Pimley to stay with her and force a tough shot. Carvalho on the boards, and she is fouled. Charlie Turner Thorne said that uh, Sion Carvalho just is a battler on the boards. In fact, the all-time leading scorer and rebounder from her junior college, and she goes to war on the offensive boards. She's very athletic down low. She's not scared of contact, and she's aggressive. She's hard-nosed down low. If you don't put a body on her, she's going to get that rebound. Levens will step out. Natalie Tucker back in. Boardman also returns for the Sun Devils. Leah Combs holding it outside. Leonard had to bring it back out again. Good pressure on her by Mendiola. Boardman, they're trying to find the inside still, but it's just not there as strong. Tucker for three. Not a great outside shooter, and that one will go out of bounds. And Megan Franza will check back in now for Washington. Arizona State offensively needs to swing the basketball. Right now, they're kind of holding on to the ball, not moving it quickly. And you see the result, it's just a three-pointer from the wing, kind of a last-ditch effort. They need to get the ball inside and move the ball. Neither team with a ton of success from the outside so far. Sorensen holding. Washington trying to get untracked in offense just a little bit. Franz a tough runner there with a couple defenders. The Huskies crash the boards, crash into one another, and Halpenny is there to follow. The Huskies continue to hit the boards. As we mentioned, the leader in the pack in, and that's why they just a hard nose and they just keep fighting for those offensive rebounds. Tucker, Carvalho getting isolated. She's trying to put her head down and go through. Husky fans wanted a walk, and Tucker nails it outside. Good job by Carvalho not to try to force it that time. Well, that's what you have to do. If they're going to double down on the block, as they did to Carvalho, she's got to kick it out, and ASU has got to hit those long jumpers. Tucker came through with the long jumper, and that's how you ease that double down pressure on the low block. Washington with three around the perimeter. They skip to Pimley for three. One of the best shooters. She doesn't get a lot of them. And Sorensen out races Carvalho to the board. Boardman stepping in nicely in the passing lane. Leonard wisely pulls up. Now finds Boardman outside. Again, nothing but air, but it's chased down by Tucker. Shot clock continues to run. Carvalho, good job, and she steps in nicely that time. Good finish. She had the open jump shot on the skip pass down low. She didn't take it. She took one dribble, but it was a wise decision. She kind of got her balance and went up strong with a nice soft jumper. Franz is spotting corner. Carvalho out to her in a hurry. Sorensen lost the handle, regained it. Good cut along the baseline that time, but Sheets is strong, and Boardman brings it down. Great look ahead for Leonard. Looked like she took an extra step. Tucker nearly threw it away and does. Carvalho couldn't hang on. Franza, Huskies three on two. Pimley, good look to Sorensen. Too strong, and again they crash. Halpenny pulls it down. They'll call it a held ball. It'll belong to Arizona State. A good transition offense by the Huskies. Four on three. ASU's got to do a better job of getting back. Off to a strong start. Charlie Turner Thorne says, hey, they're climbing our backs. He hasn't gotten the call so far. Well, I guess, you know, sometimes the clothing budget does take a back seat. We welcome you back to Seattle. Washington leading it by eight here midway through the first half. Coming up tonight, the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report. The latest from the NBA All-Star Game. Blazers Rasheed Wallace among the attendees. Gonzaga tries to keep its perfect West Coast Conference mark against the Galloping Gales of St. Mary's. When you want to know what's going on with your favorite home teams and players, it's the Regional Sports Report tonight at 11, right here on Fox Sports Net. Johnson back into the Arizona State lineup. She immediately gets the ball and trickles it in over Lalum. Well, offensively, they put Johnson down low, put four guards all around the outside, and Huskies defense was just too spread out to get down low to Johnson to double. Huskies have missed their last four. They've gone from seven out of 12 to seven of 16 now. Arizona State still struggling a bit as well, just four of 12 from the four. Lalum 
Got that shovel to Payne. Sheets again pinning inside. Got around Carvalho, and Leanne Sheets are giving her all sorts of time in the lane. Leanne Sheets did a good job pinning her defender, sealing her off. A nice lob from the Huskies down low, and Sheets is able to finish. Johnson out a little higher. Nice underneath for Boardman, who spun out of trouble to put that home. Well, out of that timeout, you know that Charlie Turner Thorne told her Wildcats to spread the offensive out, the offense out, make the Husky defense fly out, way out to the three-point line, and they can't double down with so much space to work with. Well, Franza got a great first step on Tucker, but she watched the defenders coming at her. They're going to call the rebounding foul on Sheets. That is her second. Franza had a good look. The norm, she's dominant with her left hand. It's a good shot with the right hand. She's capable of making that shot. It's a little bit too hard, and then Sheets picks up the foul. But if you're the Sun Devils, you know you've got to block out on every possession. That's half the Huskies' offense is getting a shot up and then just crashing the boards. Amanda Levins returns for ASU, and Aubrey McFadden, a senior from Redmond, in for the first time today. Her final trip back up home as a Sun Devil. Tucker finding Johnson. Again, sandwiched by defenders. Mollum fighting for it. And a reach-in foul is going to be called. Is it Johnson or McFadden? It is Aubrey McFadden. And Johnson's been lucky in a couple spots here that she hasn't picked up her second. Sheets will take a seat with her two fouls, along with Pimley as Charlie Turner Thorne takes a look at the revised Husky lineup, which includes Halpenny and Juliana Mendiola once again. Let's see how quickly the Sun Devils got out of that zone. Good stutter step by Payne for the open look. Lalum another offensive board for Washington. Franzo is cutting, and Boardman a great job of recovering. Well, it's the kind of defense coaches don't want. You don't want them to go by, to blow by you in the first place, but Boardman knew she was beaten, just reached around. It's kind of a playground move, but it's effective. Just knocks it right out of bounds. Quick look again, and another drain three ball for Lori Payne. Lori Payne is feeling it tonight. She started slow much of the season in the first half, and then come on in the second half tonight. She's feeling it from the start. I think she's a TV performer. She lights it up whenever we're here. <laughs> Levens, again, a good hesitation move. Tough shot there. She didn't square up. On the scramble, Mendiola is there and gets it to Franza. Boardman with another bat away. She did it twice and then stepped on the sideline. Charlie Turner Thornton says, hey, she wasn't anywhere near it. She's asking again. Well, as a freshman coming into Pac-10 play, Boardman very savvy. Megan Franza very quick in the open court with the ball. Boardman just reaches around again from behind and then just steps out of bounds. Unlucky break for Arizona State. Yeah, she was out of bounds. Looked as though she didn't get both feet back in to establish her presence on the court. Franza having to chase that one down. Boardman, a lot of height there. That's going to make it tough for Mendiola today as well. And a whistle off the ball. A hold on the Sun Devils. Well, Arizona State, they want their post to front all places on the floor in the man-to-man. -man. So if you have your big person like Melody Johnson out way outside the basket and you're trying to front, it's very difficult to constantly readjust and reposition with the movement of the ball. And Johnson just caught from behind, draped on Lala and picks up that foul. Yeah, she's going to be way out now as they have to pull her out of the lineup with two fouls. Franza for three. Tapped by Mendiola, then it went off the hands of Megan. It'll belong to Arizona State. 26-point performance Thursday night for Franza. June Doherty watching her team as they hang on to that nine-point lead, still holding Arizona State to 33% shooting. Their zone has been effective so far. Levens behind the stripe. Well, so much for that. Well, Levens is a deadly outside shooter. She has NBA range. If you allow her to set her feet and don't get a hand in her face, she will knock that down. And that's what the Huskies have to be concerned with. They have to find Levens and make sure she doesn't get an open look. Especially with Johnson out of the lineup. Again, Boardman reaching in. She steps nicely into the passing lanes. Pressured by Franza, and she'll go to the line. Only two points so far in the game for Boardman, but she's been impressive defensively. She 
just has those quick hands and she's very savvy. You see her getting her hand in the lane. Arizona State's pressure defense working this time down the floor. And then Megan Franza, all she can do is foul Boardman. Boardman showing speed and versatility in the front court. She's over six feet tall, but comfortable with the ball in her hands in the transition offense. You're right, and she's seventh in the conference in steals, and that's almost unheard of for someone with her size. Well, I'm impressed with her, just her confidence level, her savviness as a freshman coming into the pack team. You can tell she's not intimidated whatsoever. Halpany and Combs batted away. Boardman there again with another steal, and she's called for the walk. Trying to find some room underneath, and the shadow of Lalum was impressive enough to stop her that time. Amanda Levens. She hits better than 41% of her three-pointers. She's brought the Sun Devils within five. Welcome back to Seattle for this Pac-10 Women's Basketball Showdown between Arizona State and Washington. The 23rd ranked Sun Devils taking on the Huskies. Second straight ranked opponent for Washington. They lead the Sun Devils by five. I'm Todd Pickett along with former Husky Elise Woodward. At Bank of America Arena, Huskies have led throughout this ball game. They opened the contest with the first eight points and haven't looked back yet. While I'm outside with some pressure from Combs. And a whistle again before the shot that time by Halpany and the call is gonna go against Aubrey McFadden, her second. Substitutes continue. Heather Reichman in for Washington. She'll replace Halpany. Rainey Crisp returns to the ASU lineup. Kane harassed there by Tucker. Washington again very patient around the perimeter. Lalum trying to get isolated. Payne steps in nicely. Couldn't get the bounce and Levens pulls it down. Meet it when the point guard gets the rebounds. They just get into the flow that much faster and Levens goes coast to coast. She has seven and it's a 14-5 ASU run over the last six plus minutes. Well, nobody picks up Levens in the open court. You have to be careful of her. She is a scorer. Her first and foremost thought is to get through the rim, and you see her there just weaves her way in through traffic and finishes in the fast break. Amanda Levens pulling this one down off the boards, and she just goes to work. But you, one of the problems in a 2-3 zone as the Huskies play is that nobody's really in charge of the of the ball off the top. There's two people that set out the two wings and you kind of help each other out. But if nobody calls that immediately, I've got ball, you can lead to situations with that. The Sun Devils leading scorer, dragging them right back into this ball game. There are a few more Sun Devil fans, but they even brought their own cheerleader to see if she can fit economy size that way when they take the, the team trip. A little sleepy having to go back to back games, but she's there for a Saturday showdown. We welcome you back to Seattle. Huskies were up 15 3 just six and a half minutes ago, and Arizona State has come back. They learned a little bit about winning on the road in that game in Pullman Thursday, and they're putting it to work once again here. Jen Albert in the lineup. She's playing in the middle of this zone defense for Arizona State right now. Well, Charlie Turner Thorne before the game said they're going to mix up their defenses. They're not going to let Washington adjust to what they're doing. Franza left alone, and she finally drains a three-pointer. She was four for eight Thursday, but started out 0 for three from behind the stripe here. And that's the weakness of the zone defense. You can't get to every shooter. And Megan Franz is the first one you need to get out to on the wing. At least that was a much needed basket right there for the Huskies. Britt Leonard with it. Crisp outside. Levens, and again, Payne right up on her this time. Oh, she steps back and lets it fly. <laughs> Lori, you're going to have to come in another step. That was deep. Just the presence of mind, Levin, she just has that confidence. Even if somebody is in her face, she'll go up when she's feeling it. You can tell she let that fly with all the confidence in the world. Mandiola trying to get a step on Rainey Crisp, who's a good defender, another transfer to this ASU program, and Andrea Lalum steps outside. She is so poised as a freshman. She has so many versatile skills for somebody that's six foot four. It's hard to believe the Huskies will have her for four years here in this program. Crisp chasing that one down. 
And the Sun Devils without one of their top scorers in their inside threat right now, so Levens is having to light it up. Leonard losing the handle, Franz of the steal. One on one with Rainey Crisp and takes her to the hole. Timeout called by Charlie Turner Thorne. Yeah, she's doing her thing right now, thank you. Well, that's a good timeout by Charlie Turner Thorne. All of a sudden, the Huskies, boom, went on a quick run, got a three pointer by Franza, a steal, and then another in the fast break. You see Franza just quick hands right there defensively in that 2 3 zone, getting out. And she just takes it all the way. You see her kind of pause, pause for a second, hesitate, see if Crisp is going to foul her. She doesn't. She takes it all the way to the hole for the score. And she's pumped up. The Huskies have pushed the lead now back out to eight. Megan Franz is starting 0 for 4 overall. She's made her last two, and uh, that surely helps when your leading scorer gets untracked. She had a huge first half Thursday night in the victory over Arizona, at least. 22 points in the first half alone, and she was scoring from everywhere on the floor, taking it to the hole, baseline jumpers, pull-up, threes. She was doing it all. She quieted off in the second half, but that's what she's capable of, those big runs, just quick hits one after another if you don't concentrate on slowing her down. Now ASU has decided to bring Melody Johnson back in with the two fouls. So Charlie Turner Thorne decides she needs the inside threat as Levens misses from outside. Franza running it in transition. Boardman back in as well and right over her goes Franza. That one off the hands of Carvalho. It'll stay with Washington. A little tougher when you got 6-1 getting a hand in your face out there. She wanted to pull up from the initial offense. She passed it off to Mendiola, got it back, and said, oh, I'm not going to pass it off again. I'm going to let it fly. Tucker right up with Mendiola this time. And Jilly steps right behind the screen. Halpany follows it, and a foul. Levin's on the hold, and she'll have a chance for the three-point play. Well, that is what's so difficult about matching up with the Huskies. Arizona State gets out. They do a good job. They get a hand in the face of the shooter. Tucker's right there. Mendiola misses. And then it's just a matter of you have six foot three Carly Halpenny down low working the board. The big people know the shots are going to go up. Good position for the rebounds. Halpenny's come on strong in the last few games. And she's there. And Melody Johnson can't be physical with her. She can't use her body like she wants to right now because she has two fouls. Reichman, the offensive board. Johnson stepping in on the pass. The other thing that was impressive about that basket, she had Levins hanging on her arm, took her right up to the basket. Well, Halpenny's strong, and she's just getting her chance. She's battled injuries throughout her career. She's blown out her ACL. She's had hip problems. Finally, she's 100% healthy this season, and you can see she's a heck of a player out of Canada. You saw Leah Combs back in for ASU, replacing Carvalho. Outside for Payne. Trickles along, and they say it did go over the plane of the backboard. It'll belong to the Sun Devils. Well, the Washington Huskies have to be careful. They don't want to die by the three-pointer. Right now, you see they've been throwing up a lot of threes. When you have success, scoring 98 and 91 points, shooting so many three balls, it's easy to get into that groove and not look inside. But they need to work it around a little bit more at this point. Boardman left alone, can't get it. Mendiola chasing it down. Huskies on a 7-0 run that's pushed this lead back to 10. Arizona State 25% from behind the arc. Kane thought about it for a second. And a whistle off the ball against Washington. Mary Watford says we're going the other way. We just need to find out who it's on. Okay, it's on Carly Halpity. She set a five in the numbers. Yeah, we had to get it fixed, yeah. You see, just trying to establish low block position. Halpity extends her arm right there and just, oh man, elbows Melody Johnson right in the ear. And that is the seventh team foul on Washington. Johnson unable to convert. And that's a big miss. Right now, ASU is in desperate need of a basket. Huskies have pushed this lead out to 10. They need any kind of scoring they can get. Franza with the quick shot. Johnson able to bring it down. Holmes up ahead of the pack. Levins couldn't find her in time, though. Tucker, good open look. And Franza, another board. A lot of long rebounds so far here in the first half. Naturally, it happens with the outside shots. Franza trying to step around Johnson. Good recovery there. 
Johnson having to come outside now against Megan. Reichman left alone, pulled the string short. Johnson tapped it out of bounds. No, they say it's Washington's ball. Whoop. There we go. Tom Dubas says, I know, I know. We had it backwards. It'll belong to the Huskies when we come back. Jill Pimley will check into the Washington lineup as well. June Doherty wants to make sure it's still her team's ball. And Tom says, I blew the call. June says, thank you. And the Huskies will have the ball. At least he admitted it. <laughs> Charlie says, oh, wait a minute, what's going on? We'll sort it all out. Washington's ball when we come back. We welcome you back to Seattle. Washington enjoying a great margin on the board so far, a 21-12 advantage, and that includes nine offensive rebounds so far here in the first half. Well, as you said, long shots equal long rebounds, and the Huskies have been in the right spots at the right time, and their big people have just crashed the boards hard. Franza left alone. They'll have to board this one. No, she got leveled, and the ball went in on the bank. It looked way off, but uh, got a little help from the glass. Uh, she'll admit that was ugly. <laughs> Clear up off the glass, but hey, if you get it to go, you take it. Batted away from Johnson. Pimley with the steal. Steady play there. Again, we've talked about Jill Pimley. Makes a lot of the little contributions that don't often show up. Just settle the team back down there instead of trying to force something. She's the team captain, and as a senior, that's her role. Just get this team into the offense, get the hustle plays, and she does a great job of that every night. Payne left wide open for the three. It rimmed halfway down before it came out. Arizona State has not scored in nearly four minutes. Levin's trying to do something about it right here. Great cut by Boardman on the back door, and she couldn't finish. Washington again, three on two. Franza trying to get it into the middle more. Payne walked. Earlier in the game, Lori Payne, the same move in the fast break. Somebody flies out at her when she, when Lori Payne shows shot, you have to go out and get a hand in her face. And as soon as you do that, she goes by him. She just didn't establish a pivot foot and gets the walk. Andrea Lalum checks in for the Huskies. You see that Sun Devil drought continuing to run here. Johnson, they're really doing a good job of flattening out the zone against her. She's way up high and can't get anywhere but a hand check's going to be called here. That's against Kimley, her first. Well, the Huskies came in knowing that they had to shut down Melody Johnson, get double teams on her, not let her catch the ball, get ASU out of their offensive and the offensive rhythm. And right now you can tell ASU doesn't really know where to go. Their offense has not gone inside and out. It hasn't gone inside at all. And that's right now why they've only scored 20 points. Natalie Tucker unable to hit. It's a cold afternoon so far for the Sun Devils, but Boardman steps in with another steal and lays it home. Five for Betsy Boardman, but that's at least her third steal of the game. And that will lead, you see that defense leading to offense, and that's what Charlie Turner Thorne preaches. Get out, get aggressively, it'll help you at both ends. Again, Boardman with the steal. She'll go up against Lalam and bangs her down to the floor. Offensive foul. Lollum having to pick herself up there, shaking up a little bit after that knock. <laughs> Betsy Borman in the lane again. You see Lollum with the bad pass, but she's not going to just stand there. She hustles all the way back, sets her position. I don't know, that might be a block if I'm calling that. Pimley unable to hit. Lollum with the follow won't go. Reichman there, she'll go to the line. And again, the Huskies pounding the offensive glass. Carly Turner Thorne going crazy, trying to get her team to block out defensively. Second foul on Betsy Boardman, but get this. She has six steals already here in the first half. Heather Reichman's first points of the day. And in fact, that's the first free throw she's made this season. Carvalho and Crisp return for ASU. All right, one, play. The junior from King's High School. She goes from 0 for 2 to 2 for 4. Raise the percentage. In a hurry. Levens, all she got, Reichman in the air. And how'd she get by Lalum? Couldn't make the basket. That was a bit of magic right there from Levens. The call is going to go against Reichman, her first. 
Levin's just penetrating the gaps in the defense, going all the way down. Nobody's going to step in front. Mollum's probably a little bit sore from taking the charge on board, but doesn't want to step in there for their second one in the last five minutes. And the Sun Devils hitting the glass on their own end. We talked a little about Cian Carvalho, transfer from Hutchinson Community College, where she was the leading scorer and rebounder in that school's history. This, this Arizona State team is amazing. Seven transfers on the roster out of 15 players. That's and half their team is from other schools, and Natalie, all of their starters. It's, it's amazing that and Charlie Turner Thorne has got them into their system, and now you can see that they've slowly, as the season progressed, got better and better and better. There's some great talent on this team, though. Right. The thing to note about that is that most of the transfers are not from junior college, but from other Division I four-year programs. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Wide open look for Reichman behind the stripe. Sorensen backing in, should be called for the rebound foul, and that is the way it'll go. Cheryl's second. So with that aggressiveness on the boards uh, comes some personal fouls sometimes. There's one of the transfers, Amanda Levins. Hey, she went to Old Dominion, one of the great programs in the country. She was a starting point guard two years ago as a sophomore at Old Dominion when they made their trip to the Sweet 16. So she has a ton of experience. She comes from a good program. She's a winner. She has that mentality. And you can see it's rubbed off on all these teammates. Their starting point guard, Natalie Tucker, she played her first season at Texas A&M. Melody Johnson, their big presence inside, she's a transfer from Colorado. There's just a ton of talent on this team that it started in different on, yeah. programs. Crisp, New Mexico State, McFadden, Colorado State, Liz Paulson originally at Pepperdine before going to a junior college as Levins gets one of the two. But the key thing Charlie Turner Thorne and her staff pointed out about all that is that most of those players were players they recruited out of high school. So they had familiarity with them. And when the players themselves decided they wanted to transfer, the first phone call they made was to Tempe. And now they're finally part of the Sun Devil program. That says a lot about Charlie Turner Thorne and her ability to relate to players. Hey, I might not get you, but good luck in the future and I hope you have a great career. That ends a lot of players when you end that recruiting period with a good note like that, thinking, you know, this is somebody I could play for. Man, what could have been? And then if they're unhappy in their situation, where they going, where they ended up going, it's amazing that seven of them called back and said, hey, you know, I would like that shot to play at Arizona State. Speaking of shot, Huskies have time for about one, and it's Lollins for another three. She has two from behind the stripe. Levins at the horn drains it. Little momentum for ASU and a big first half for Amanda Levins. She has 14, but the rest of her team could only contribute 14 more points. And as a result, Charlie Turner Thorne and the Sun Devils trail by 10 at the half. Big buckets both ways, Elise. Well, the Huskies know when the time is riding down. Get it to Andrea Lollum. She drills at long range. Got that nice touch for the center. But who do you want with the ball with the time winding down? Amanda Levin, as I said, she has range. That's just like a jump shot for her. She pumped up in the air, got it to go. She doesn't even act surprised. Lala got one, Levin's the other, and a big first half for Amanda Levin's. But the Sun Devils are going to need some help in Seattle. Both teams back out on the floor at Bank of America Arena. We're just about ready to start the second half of play. Washington has led throughout after scoring the first eight points of the game. Sun Devils did get to within three, and Amanda Levins brought them back, Elise. Well, Amanda Levins, you cannot leave her open. That is too much time. The Huskies, when they go to that zone, you have to keep somebody with Levins because she can light it up in a hurry. The Huskies, on the other hand, they were shooting a lot of threes as well. They made six in the first half, hitting 40%, six out of 15. But it was their offensive rebounding that got them this big lead, 10 points at the half. You see Leanne Sheets there hitting the boards. The Huskies, 11 offensive rebounds today. And you can see that margin right there, 25 to 14 out rebounding the Sun Devils. And the biggest thing that it does, go back up to the top and look, the teams are shooting about the same. But Washington has attempted 12 more shots already in the first half of play. One of the reasons why they lead it by 10. And as you mentioned, Elise, offensive rebounds have been a big key so far. Well, Washington just has been pounding away at the glass. They're a guard-orientated team. You see points in the paint. Washington has 12 points in the paint. It's mostly all been fast break offense. And the big people down low getting the rebounds from the guard shots. Amanda Levin started a bit slow, but she's 5 of 10 from the floor. The rest of the team is 5 for 15, Boardman and Carvalho. 
adding to the point totals, but Melody Johnson has just three, and Tucker two for the Sun Devils. For Washington, some fairly balanced scoring, led by Megan France, who has two three-pointers. Payne and Lalam also up amongst the leading scorers, and Leanne Sheets also has six for the Huskies as we get underway here to start the second half. Mendiola, Sheets, Payne, Lalam and Franza for Washington. Sheets inside Carvalho again. Couldn't get the roll. And Boardman with the rebound. She had a big first half with six steals. Tucker, Levins, Boardman, Carvalho, and Johnson for ASU. Well, Arizona State has to get the ball inside. You see him looking down low for Johnson. Boardman for three and strong. Carvalho, a nice offensive board. Finds Johnson, looked like she took an extra gallop there, but she puts it home for just her fifth point. Only 11 minutes she played in the first half because of foul trouble. I'm sure Charlie Turner Thorne at halftime preached to her team about hitting the boards. You see they come off right now, get the defensive board on one end, and then hit the offensive glass at the other. Oh, Mendiola left Tucker somewhere out around midcourt. Mendiola smooth. You can just see how much time she puts in at the game. She's got the pull-up jumper, the three. Very versatile. Johnson on the block, and the Sun Devils go down low for their first two. And that's exactly what the Sun Devils wanted to do, establish Johnson down on the low block. The Huskies need to get their double team there quicker, or Johnson will have a big second half. Sheets backing Carvalho down once again. Now Lalam outside, just makes her that much more of a threat. They get Johnson away from the boards. Payne got by Levens, a little contact, no whistle. It stays at this end of the floor. Lori Payne says, for all that, I didn't get a whistle. Well, Payne is, does a good job. She just kind of slithers in the lane. She's not the quickest guard, but she just knows how to find the gaps. Payne's three went two-thirds of the way down and spun back out. Mendiola, another offensive board, and Franza makes him pay on the second chance. The Huskies have the luxury of having two of the best pure shooters in the pack San Lori Payne, one of the best, and Megan Franza on the other wing makes it very difficult to get to both of these shooters. Franza into double figures again. That's her 11th point. And Charlie Turner Thorne immediately calls for the 32nd timeout, less than two minutes into the second half. You see Mendiola, a good three-point shooter in her own right, kicks it out, Levins has to respect Payne. She has to go all the way out. And Boardman coming all the way down from down low, guarding Mendiola on the weak side. Can't get out to Franza in time. And if you set her up and give her that much time, she's deadly. The Sun Devils from the outside range, you see there in three-pointers. Going in, leading the conference, Washington fifth. Arizona State not having much success from the outside at just 27%. Elise, as a coach, you know that Charlie Turner Thorne spent a large part of the half saying, let's keep him off the offensive boards and don't let Franza spot up. So it's got to be frustrating that she had to take a timeout to tell the team the same thing all over again. Well, you can tell your team one thing, but for them to execute it, it's, one, it's another. Every coach wishes what they said that the team would listen to, but otherwise everybody would be a winner. Levin stepping around, Payne, tough runner that time, and Franza chases it down. Three on one for Washington. Oh, Dipsy, do! Franza finds Payne. <laughs> Just great basketball in the open court. You can see these two love playing together with one another. Three on one in the fast break. And Megan with the behind the back showing a little flash. Yeah, you put a little French pastry on it, it never hurts. Boardman short, Lalam a strong board. Mendiola looking for a minute. Sheets was up in front of the pack, but they decide to walk it up. Payne just waiting. She's gonna get close to a five count. Now she puts it to the floor. Franza, somebody didn't pick her up, and she rolls it home. Big mistake in the zone that time. Well, it's very difficult to match up with Franza. She's left-handed and throws people off. Seven straight for Washington comes to an end as Boardman answers. She's coming off a couple of good performances, a career-high 19 last week, followed by 18 Thursday in Pullman, seven so far for Betsy. Backdoor cut for Franza, good help by Combs. 
Swordman once again reaching behind. She is so good at that little just flip it from behind and hope she gets it off Franz's knee. You see Franz in the open court looking up, sees her teammate. Unselfish, too, the team's leading scorers from last year again this year. Franz is showing she's unselfish. She'll take the pass as well as the score. Oh, she, gets, she gets the ISO there, a little showboating all the way along. Two assists to go with the double figures now. Rainey Crisp back in, along with Brett Leonard for Arizona State. For the Huskies, O'Neill comes in along with Halpany. 50% plus for both teams so far here in the second half. Mendiola spin over Leonard. Holmes pulls it in. So now the Sun Devils with their leading scorer on the bench taking a breather will try to find some offense. Chris, patient ball handler, Leonard. Tucker finding Holmes. Good look inside to Johnson, and she avoids, Payne does, the foul. Melody Johnson now six in this second half already after just three points in the first. The well, Sun Devils have been so effective when they get it inside. It's just a matter of recognizing that, moving the ball, and getting her on the low block. When Johnson gets it down there, she's so effective, but the guards have to find her and get her the ball. Mendiola, tough shot there as she tried to throw it over the head with Johnson beside her. Chris back in transition the other way. Johnson left alone. Boy, they've got to get better denial on her there or she'll walk home. Well, if Johnson establishes herself and gets set on the block, you're not going to push her off. And it's hard to get around her. She's so strong. You've got to push her out and not let her set there. From the transition break, just get down there before her. Everybody walks off Mendiola, but she can't make him pay, and Leonard chases it down. Crisp in transition. Huskies did a nice job of getting back, but then they leave Leonard alone on the other side. Tucker's all alone for an easy putback. The Sun Devils, the difference in these last two times down the floor, they are moving the basketball. Skip passes, moving it inside, moving it outside. It's amazing how much quicker it takes. When you have Melody Johnson scoring on the block, you can't get to all the shooters. You can't cover the whole floor. Eight straight points for Arizona State. And eight and a half for Melody Johnson. Washington takes a timeout. Back in Seattle, the officials put the ball down to the floor. Rainey Chris stepped out of bounds and tried to inbound it. There's just one catch. It was Washington's basketball. Good effort by Rainey. She's though. trying to be sneaky. Well, she saw the count start, and she did what any guard would do. She panicked and took it out of bounds. Open look for Sheets as Halpany finds her. So both teams with huge defensive lapses the last couple times. A good high-low right off the timeout. Finding Getting it down low, getting the high percentage shot, wide open, Leanne shoots down low. Good call out of the timeout by Washington. Carvalho stepped on the baseline. Turnover number 10 on Arizona State, and the ball will belong to Washington. We have a timeout on the floor. The Huskies looking to earn a share of first place in the Pac-10 women's chase. They lead Arizona State by nine. Welcome back to Seattle. Washington leading Arizona State by nine in the second half of our Pac-10 Women's Showdown. On the field, they're invincible, but off the field, they're all too human. Fox Sportsnet takes a look at the athletes you thought you knew. This week, Carl Malone broke down racial barriers and found a new home in Utah, only to be attacked by the people he thought of as his own. Find out about the Carl Malone you never knew as Beyond the Glory takes you inside the hidden world of sports biggest stars. A look at the mailman tonight at 8 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. That will be an interesting one. One of the great players and great citizens, as it were, in the NBA. Profiled tonight right here on Fox Sports Net. Jill Pimley back in for Washington, finding Franza. Oh, there's a big hit by Chris as she put Pimley down on her wallet and will get called for that. Well, it's a great job by Jill Pimley. Rainey Chris just has to keep up with the speed of Megan Franza. Pimley sees that, and she will sacrifice her body. That's one of her fortes is drawing that charge. A 
Dirk Cutter might want to give a, a call and sign up Randy Crisp. That's as hard a hit as he'll get in his Sun Devil football program. You see Pimley, again, one of those little intangibles we talked about. Meanwhile, Johnson back in for Arizona State. What a big difference she's had so far here in the second half of play, staying out of foul trouble and finding open looks at the basket. Sheets has done a great job just getting position all day, and Halpenny had a six-footer, and it went about four that time. <laughs> Not quite enough on that. Leonard back in, a little between the legs work a couple times here. Good ball handler. Levens back in with Johnson, the one-two punch, and a travel call on Melody Johnson. That's what Arizona State wanted. They have Johnson isolated on the block. No double team was, they, they weren't quick enough to get there. Normally she makes that shot, just gets called for the shuffle. Charlie Turner Thorne trying to get the ear of Janine Pence as her team turns it over for the 11th time. Washington stretching it out now. A lot of high-low action against this man-to-man -man defense. Sheets on Carvalho. Got that quick release, it's hard to defend, Elise. She's quick, she has a very good spin move. She uses it effectively. And when she takes her time and doesn't get rushed in her shot, she can be very effective, as you see right there. And she almost releases from the side. It's impossible to get a piece of it. Levens with a couple of defenders keeping an eye on her. Chris trying to get by Pimley, fires it up over Sheets. Good rebound for Johnson. She gets fouled. Will they count it? Yes. Francis says she walked, but instead I think the call is going to go against Megan, and they will count the basket. For the key to this, the Sun Devils reversed the basketball. They got ball movement. They moved it all the way on the other side. Carly Halpenny did not find Johnson for the weak side rebound. She didn't get a body on her. If you leave Johnson down there, she has a nose for the ball, and she can, she's so physical and just... Even with people hanging on her, she can get that shot off and get it to go. 11 of those 14 points now in the second half for Melody Johnson. So the Sun Devils have gotten their second leading score untracked in a hurry here. Andrea Lalam back in for Washington. Sheets with Boardman who just checked back in for Arizona State. Pimley having to step through. Lalam, hand check there from Johnson. Good entry to Sheets and she does it again. She'll write a textbook on post play today. Leanne Sheets down there with Boardman. Boardman the inexperienced freshman and Sheets the senior. And you can just tell she's just sealing her defender, using her experience to know the angles and getting it done on the low block. Leonard took the extra step as the Huskies collapsed on her. Cheryl Sorensen and Juliana Mendiola returning for Washington. See the Huskies getting it inside. Boardman just sealed completely out of position. Good job by Sheets just sealing her off. And she has the wide open look. No weak side help for the Sun Devils when they're so spread out in that pressure man-to-man -man defense. Sorensen, Mendiola, oh, she passed up a nice shot and found Lalam instead. Sheets should be called for the push-off. She says, no, I didn't, I didn't, but they caught her. Betsy Boardman went sideways that time, and Leanne picks up her third foul. Jim Dory says, well, I beg to differ, but she's not going to win the argument. We have a timeout on the floor. Sheets with her third, first of the half. Washington maintaining its lead on the 23rd ranked Arizona State Sun Devils. We'll be back to Seattle after this. Welcome back to Seattle. Washington leads Arizona State by 10 in this Pac-10 women's basketball matchup. Good one between two of the top teams in the league. Well, if you're ready for an Oberman fix, Sunday Night Sports just got a whole lot better. The Keith Oberman Evening News airs at 10 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Each Sunday night, Keith provides his unique perspective on the world of sports, wrapping up the week's events and looking forward to what's ahead. The Keith Oberman Evening News tonight at 10, right here on Fox Sports Net.
Kelly O'Neill back in the lineup for Washington as we return to action. Amanda Levins in for the Sun Devils. Chris trying to find Johnson. Pimley stepped in, took it away. And a held ball situation. It stays with Arizona State. Joe Pimley just using her quickness there, getting on the floor, not scared to get a little bumps and bruises, as we've said. You see her doubling down just because a good job. Melody Johnson brings the ball down. Somebody that big, you always reach, keep it up so the little guards can't get it. And Joe Pimley's right there to snag it. O'Neill stepped in, forced the turnover, number 13 on the Sun Devils. O'Neill and Boardman tried to get around. They'll call her for the foul. Third personal on Betsy. Sun Devils post defense is so difficult to master. It really takes more than one season. And Boardman, a freshman, you see she's gotten sealed the last few times, picks up the foul. It takes a process. It's a learning process to learn how to get around effectively in the low post. Lollum, great position on Johnson and puts it home. You see the strength of Wallen that time. She receives the lob. The weak side defense is there. And she just goes up strong right through the defense. Coaches on both teams talking about her today said she's just going to continue to get better, as is Betsy Boardman, who picks up her ninth point. But Arizona State cannot trade baskets back and forth, Elise. Not at this point. Down 10 and about 10 minutes to go. They've got to put together a run, and they're capable of it. They did it down in Tempe. Came from 14 back. Johnson and Crisp forcing the turnover as that pass was a little late that time. Lollum had posted up a little earlier. And that's what they have to do just defensively. Shut down the Huskies, get a couple scores, and they're right back in this game. Levin's looking to find Tucker. Johnson got inside again and lays it home. 16 in the game, 13 in the half for Johnson. She has 13 of their 19 second half and points. She's working hard. You just see her give a tug to the jersey. She needs out. She needs a sub. She's working hard in that low block. Huskies trying to get it going without Frenza right now. And a whistle, a block. That one again against Rainey Crisp, her second personal. Number two, Johnson will take that breather now after a, another bucket. Well, Johnson with 16 points now, 13 in the second half, just gets it down low, uses her body to ward off the defense and goes up strong right through the double team. Leah Combs coming back in along with Carvalho and Liz Paulson right there on defense, number three, one of three Northwesterners on this Arizona State team from Lake Ridge High and Lake Oswego. Sheets. Holmes backed away from her. Mendiola crashing to the boards, kept it alive. Wow. A oh, great hustle by Mendiola, diving through the air to save that ball that looked unretrievable. Husky bench all up screaming. They wanted it to go into Sheets. She had position on Leah Combs. And Combs is, I think, shaken up is part of the problem. The Huskies throw it away. And yes, she twisted an ankle. She was shaken up badly. She was grimacing out there, and at first it looked as though she were laughing at something, but she actually injured herself and was grimacing, and Johnson will have to come back in. That's always tough when you immediately get hurt. You have to come back. You see she just landed on it wrong, and she's trying to, you can see her grabbing it. It's either a hamstring, the back of her knee, something. Must have popped, and she's trying her best. I mean, great heart right there, just not giving up just trying to hang on until you can get a substitute. She's being attended to on the Arizona State bench now, and it, it does appear to be in a pretty fair amount of pain. Levins can't hit. Great job by O'Neill of sealing off and then yanking that rebound down. Kelly, who's got a little bit of speed advantage on Johnson, finds Pimley. Mendiola, good loop in, Sheets. Spinning over Carvalho, she'll go to the line. The Huskies have had success today when they've worked it inside. Sheets has done a good job in the second half of just standing her ground down on the block, ceiling. And she does a nice spin move on that time to get to the line. Another great shooting performance for Leanne Sheets. And this is where she struggles the free throw line, just 27% on the year. 
Well, I wasn't going to tell anybody, but hey, it worked again. Well, that's good. It's been a mental block for her. She's a good shooter in practice. She can make 80%. She's just struggled mentally at the line in the game. I'm Fran sure she's a breath of relief to hit the first one. Franza back in for Pimley. Oh, the pressure was off, but she couldn't get the second to drop. Carvalho, oh, she threw an elbow and they caught it. Inadvertent, perhaps, as Sorensen stepped into it, but Carvalho gets called for her second foul. And as soon as Sorensen's double vision stops, she'll be able to continue. You see that immediately. You think, oh, broken nose. That's where you pick up those broken noses and get stuck wearing the mask. But it looks like Sorensen's OK. Inadvertent. Carvalho didn't mean to do that. She just She turned right into her. It's kind of unfortunate. Brett Leonard back in, and uh, Cheryl will inbounds the ball. She's going to throw it to the player in the middle of the three. Who <laughs> finds Mendiola. Wide open look for O'Neal. Bingo, another three. The Huskies have started to hit from the outside last three, four games, and the three balls are flying. Well, it's going to be easy right now for the Huskies to get that open look on the outside. They pound it away in the inside. Arizona State's had to bring a double team down low. Now is when Washington should be effective hitting that three ball. And again, they answer that Arizona State close a little bit, stretch it back out to 12, but a foul at the other end now. Sheets with her fourth foul. And Washington's so effective from outside the lane. Every person on this team, it seems, can hit the three ball. The only person on the roster that has not attempted a three this year is Carly Halpenny, the 6'3 center. Everybody can step out there. It's the, the threat of the Washington offense, the long ball. They get it done. Lalam back in. There's in a state a little problem getting the ball inbounded for a moment. Boardman, tough shot there. Oh, they're going to call Lalam for the bump. It appeared as though she had pretty good position that time. She had pretty good position, moving her feet, did a good job in the lane, but Boardman does a good job just drawing that contact, going up into Lalam's body and trying to get to the free throw line. Leah Combs has gone back to the Arizona State dressing room to be attended to. Betsy Boardman now in double figures once again as she picks up her 10th point. Well, Betsy Borman and Juliana Mendiola, the two outstanding freshmen for these two teams, both candidates for freshman of the year in the Pac-10, in my opinion. Boardman, Mendiola, as well as Nicole Powell from Stanford, all three putting up big numbers this season. Franza in some traffic, got around Levens and lays it home. 15 for Megan. She has such a good first step that defenders tend to back off it sometimes. Well, it's difficult. She's going to hit the outside shot if you leave her open, and then she's so quick, especially with her left hand, getting in the lane. Very smooth, difficult matchup for anybody in the Pac-10. Leonard in traffic won't go. Rebounding foul. Carvalho and Johnson were both there, and it's against Carvalho. She picks up her third. Megan Franzo with 15. She leads all scorers for Washington in the game. And another great move there as she goes around Levens and lays it home. The Huskies enjoy a 13-point lead. Washington leading Arizona State by 13. Going into the season, the coaches pick these two teams for fifth and sixth in the Pac-10, the writers for sixth and seventh. Well, they're getting about as good as the football pundits because both teams have turned it around since 2000. Here's what they've done in Pac-10 play. Arizona State up three, the Huskies up four, and leading the league. Well, it's been a great turnaround for both of these programs. Arizona State really trying to build it up in Charlie Turner Thorne's fifth year in the program. Their to four top scorers this season are all brand new first year players at Arizona State, either transfers or freshmen. And then, and then Washington just finally has some seniors, six of them on this year's squad, none last year. Franza faked outside, went inside, couldn't get it. Sorensen is going to be called for a rebound foul that may be about the least contact we've had on the boards today, but needless to say, it's her third foul. 15 foul on Washington this half. Sorensen's been hitting the boards hard, has picked up those three fouls all down low, battling for the rebound. Being aggressive just needs to lay off the contact a little bit. Boardman, a good look from the baseline. Mendiola, Washington's leading rebounder from the guard position, pulls that one home. 
Mendiola, six feet tall, so she's not scared to, to get down there with the big people and mix it up. Does a great job in that top of the zone, crashing the middle of the lane for those boards. A little change now. They put Boardman on Franza this time down. Mendiola unable to hit the jumper, so a little defensive adjustment by ASU after she blew by Levens the last time. Well, that looked like a couple of palms there by Amanda. Leonard trying to get that triangle going again. Levens trying to heat up in her own hands and Lalem the rebound. Amanda Levens had 14 first half points capped by the runner at the buzzer. She hasn't scored this half. Uh, Megan Franza has. She has 17. Great look from Mindiola finding Franza breaking down. Arizona State just a mental lapse does not get down in defensive stance does not get back. And Franza burns him but a good look for Mindiola. Levens trying to maneuver traffic. Get everybody out of the way. They really are not doing a good job of finding Johnson right now. Carvalho and a reach in on O'Neill. Well, Arizona State, what they have to do, swing at the basketball. They've had success when they've swung the ball, reversed it around, made Washington get down, move their feet, adjust to the skip passes. Right now, when they ha when they struggle, it's because they're just standing there looking at where they're going to pass, and Washington has time to react. The foul is against Mendiola instead, so it's her first personal. Payne comes back in for Washington. Johnson down low and a chance at the three-point play. The Sun Devils, when they get it down low to Johnson, it, you feel like you're repeating yourself, but that would be my first look if I'm a guard. Where is Johnson? How can I get her the ball? You just see she's just got that big frame, gets down low on the block, and knows what to do once she catches it. Converts the three-point play. Johnson with 16 points in the second half. Boardman with five. The problem is the rest of the team has just two. Washington's lead at 15 equaled their highest of the game before that last three-point play from Johnson. Quick look for Payne and a follow-up by O'Neill over Tucker. Tapped outside the Levens. Sun Devils trying to run. Aubrey McFadden in with them. Rainey Crisp. Good look to McFadden. Blocked and a foul called. Husky fans up in arms. O'Neill thought she had the clean check from behind. The Sun Devils know they've got to put a run together. They're moving it, getting a quick shot in transition. McFadden just gets hit from behind out in the fast break. One of her hometown fans, she's glad to get a few points on the board. Again, last time with some friends in, the senior from Redmond gets in the scoring column. You see Arizona State extending their pressure, going full court. They want to make Washington, in, they want to force them into some careless mistakes at this point, force them into some early shots just like that. That's a great shot, tough one to pass up. Mendiola just couldn't get it to drop. And Arizona State trying to come back in this one. Sun Devils are used to having comebacks against the Huskies. The block goes against Mendiola, her second. Well, that was a call that can go either way. Mendiola went over to get some help, and Levens went right into her. But Mendiola was still moving her feet. A bit of a push-off with her arm. You can see Mendiola really not trying to get in Levens' way. Levens initiates the contact and throws a bit of an arm, but Mendiola's feet were not set. And an 81% shooter, Levens, looking for her first point of the second half. And she's second in the Pac-10 in free throw percentage at 81. She's money from the line. You don't want to send her to the free throw. McFadden chasing it down. The Sun Devils look to climb back in. Levens tried to force that one, and another foul called. The Sun Devils just hanging around. The Huskies have not been able to put them away. And all these fouls, especially sending Levens to the line, she missed the last one, but I guarantee she'll probably make the next two if you go by percentages. It's just a way for the Sun Devils to stop the clock, put points on the board, and a chance for them to set up their pressure defense. 
Levin's missing again. The foul is against Carly Halpenny. Now we said these rallies are nothing that the Sun Devils aren't used to. Down in Tempe, at least, Washington looked to have the road win put away, and Charlie Turner's Thorns team came battling back. Well, they were down 14, cut it all the way to three points down in Tempe. Let's take a look at the free throws. Arizona, that contact down low. Johnson has been doing it at the line, and they've done a good job just making the Huskies foul and getting to the line. Not hitting a great percentage of them, however, 60%. As a team, they usually shoot 64. That's only seventh best. A quick three for Franza. Pimley all alone didn't bring it back out. Instead, amongst the trees, she pops it home. Well, a bit of a quick look for Franza. At this point, you want to run some clock off. And she's got a shooter's mentality. She's going to let it fly. And Pimley, the good hustle getting that offensive rebound. McFadden shot pulled down by Franza as the Huskies' last basket stopped the 7 0 ASU run. This crowd suddenly a little quieter as the Sun Devils getting back into contention. Payne left alone. And again, a long board. Both Halpenny and O'Neill were there to pull it in. Mike Doherty over on the bench saying, pull it back out and let's run some clocks. So they're thinking about it. Look at that. Two to one margin on offensive boards. Halpenny with a little left hander follows up her own miss. Third time, not the charm, and a whistle on the shot. <laughs> Levin's called for the foul from behind her second. She just can't get it to go down low. It's just like she's playing catch with herself down the block. There's one. I'm wide open. Then there's two. There's three. <laughs> Finally, she gets the foul. You can see she's like, geez, can I make a two footer? But again, the Huskies just pounding the offensive glass. That's been the difference in this game. The Huskies have pounded the Sun Devils on the glass. They're not shooting a great percentage. They're getting those offensive rebounds, going back up strong. And that's why they've hung around in this game. They're up by 10. Carvalho back in along with Boardman for Arizona State. Halpany unable to convert on either one. Carvalho got that elbow up once again. Just puts her elbows out. She's okay, but she can't see. Boardman's three doesn't go. A rebounding whistle. And I think they're going to catch Washington for that. There was a Husky inside, one outside, and it was Franza going over the back of Carvalho. And Megan picks up her third. Well, Megan did a good job getting down on the low block. The, the shot went off the weak side rebound, and, and Megan's responsibility is to get to that low block. She didn't quite get there in time. Tried to flip it over. The ASU over Carvalho, but picks up the foul. And as you saw, Arizona State now in the two free throw range the rest of the way. Lalam and Sheets return for O'Neill and Halpenny. Sin Carvalho's cousin, Lee Liu, a walk on on this Arizona State team. The two also cousins to Chargers linebacker Junior Seau. She gets them both for her sixth point, right up against her game average. Arizona State still fighting, trying to get a road win and in her series split with Washington. Back in Seattle, Washington leading Arizona State by a 65-57 margin. Sun Devils shooting a little better here in the second half of the game. Huskies cooling off just a bit. At Sun Devil Streak, seven straight, their longest in nine seasons and their longest ever in Pac-10 conference play. The, the highest finish they've ever had is fourth place in the 14-year history of Pac-10 women's basketball. And it looked like they're definitely going to get that this year if they just continue to play well on the ropes a little bit here in Seattle today, though. They've never won a conference championship in any of the leagues in which they've participated. Washington trying to run a little bit of clock now. Lalam and a reach around on Johnson, her third. So after getting two early fouls, she's gone this far before picking up foul number three, a credit to her poise in the second half. She's done a good job backing off defensively, not picking up those ticky-tack fouls, knowing how important she is to this team's success. She's come back with 16 points in the second half. Now she has 19 in the game, and they need that production from her. Lalam left it short. Everybody thought two shots for a minute and then finally sprang to action on the rebound. Levin's getting set to check back in for the Sun Devils. Boardman left alone. Good step around. She made a medium shot even easier. And 12 now for Boardman. 
And this is close, six points. It's a two possession game with a three point shot. Huskies need a basket here to put this away. Johnson having to come out and chase Payne as they look to isolate Lalam. Sheets. Payne got a couple screens and a whistle. Johnson went through a screen and Jill Pimley, who else? Start calling her floor burn for short. Melody Johnson's fourth foul. Lori Payne is going down, trying to work off the screen. Melody Johnson can't believe that. She managed to go the whole, the whole half, just picking up one. Now she picks up two in the last half a minute. Pimley normally a very good shooter, but she chases down her own miss. The Huskies are killing themselves at the free throw line right now. Francis stepped on the sideline. Turnover number 12 against Washington. The only thing that's been saving the Huskies right here in this run is in June Doherty's defense, as Arizona State has not hit a lot of field goals. You have to make your free throws down the stretch like right now. The Huskies, that's, they have to go to the line and hit their shots. It's too close to the game. Boardman looking into Carvalho. Offensive foul. Mendiola stepped in to take it. Four on Carvalho all in this half. The Sun Devils have to be careful. Carvalho and Johnson now both have four fouls. They are their leaders in the front court. They're the ones that have to be physical rebounding. They have to be careful though. Each one of the next foul, they're out of the game. Charlie Turner Thorne not liking that call very much. Sun Devils looking to try to trap Mendiola. All they wanted to carry there is it went up above the shoulder. Batted away by Boardman. Levens is there. Tie up will keep it with the Huskies, and that's what they get. Betsy Boardman nearly picked another one off. She is so good at that wraparound move. When you least expect it as a guard, you get by the defender, you think you're home free, but then Boardman tips it from behind. Timeout called by Arizona State. They will take a 30. Charlie Turner Thorne expecting a second baby, another son on the way, due for about the third week of March. She says, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it the rest of the road trips or not. Son Connor celebrated his second birthday Friday, and Charlie's uh, maybe going to have to. Uh, worry about postseason action a little bit as well. Well, two years ago, she was pregnant all the way up. She coached all the way up to her pregnancy, had the baby, and was right back, just didn't miss a beat. I admire that. Just it's amazing to be able to come back that quickly. She just didn't want to miss anything in the season. Says this one's a lot larger, and she's already figuring out he's, he's going to be another active troublemaker. <laughs> Former player at Stanford, as we mentioned before, former graduate assistant here at Washington. Franza off the inbound, sailing in, draws the foul from Tucker. Now Franza, as the senior and the captain, has to step up to the line and hit these free throws. Her first attempt at the line today. And overall for the game, she's shooting just four of 13. The Huskies starting to tighten up a little bit there at the free throw stripe. 30% today for the game. That's horrible. They need they, It's just a mental block. Thank goodness they've been rebounding. Yeah, Sheets pulls that one down right now. They might want to think about going four corners. Never mind shooting again. Lalam puts it home and a nice looking assist from Payne. Yeah, great dish from Payne. A little wrap around to Lalam. Lalam goes up strong. Boardman in traffic, nearly threw it away. Johnson saved her, couldn't put it home. Carvalho on the boards, still loose. Looked as though Carvalho touched it last, and it is Washington ball. And that right there, that defensive stop by the Huskies is all about Andrea Lalam down there, six foot four, with her arms straight up, using her big frame to intimidate. And Carvalho, who's only five foot 11, couldn't get it up and over the reach. Franza taking the inbounds pass, and Carvalho is gone with that bump. Uh, 
June Doherty is checking with the officials. Saying there's a lot of bumps. Carvalho going to hang on. All players do that as long as they possibly can, I think, anymore. You hope that the, the refs won't actually catch it, even though the announcer has just said there's five personal fouls. You just hope for some reason the ref just might not catch it and keep on playing. Charlie Turner Thorne, you see there in the foreground, taking a long time talking with Rainey Crisp because they're going to make a little bit of a position alignment here, bringing Crisp, the shorter player, in for Carvalho, who's been one of their posts. Crisp, a good defender. You see the Sun Devils now basically have four guards on the floor. They're going to use that pressure defense to get after it. It's not going to be that much of a liability. Johnson, their only physical presence down low. Sun Devils with a lot more free throw attempts, and as Elise mentioned, the Huskies not doing a successful job of converting free throws. One of the reasons that Arizona State has been able to come back. Franza pops both those. She has 19 now. Fans on their feet sensing that this Washington team will have a share of the Pac-10 lead by the final buzzer. Levins can't get it. Johnson traveled. You can see this crowd is starting to feel it. They're getting up out of their seats. The Huskies, another defensive stop. Up 10 now, a minute and a half. As long as they keep making their free throws, they should put this game out of reach. Somebody's going to come back to the ball. They throw it behind Payne, and Crisp is there. The substitution pays off with the pressure. Boardman, a big three, way outside, and Sheets got it. Now a little patience here for Washington. Franz are trying to find someone. And the Huskies finally get it to Mendiola. She gets double teamed for a moment. Levin's trying to sneak in. Payne to Franz and just go to the weave, ladies. <laughs> Boardman, oh, she nearly got away with another one. Knocks Franza down hands. instead. Yes, she does. With long arms, 61 out on the wing. Very effective with swiping at the ball. Well, at least let's take a look at some of the pointers you made at the start of the game and see what's taking place. You see the Huskies 8 for 21 from the three-point line. That's a, that's a decent percentage, a good percentage for them. But the key, the plus 12 rebounding margin. And that's what's done it. They have missed, if they've missed those threes, they've been there for the rebound and putting it back up. They've just done the job on the glass. Franz's first free throw teetered and toppled through. She gets them both. And Washington on a run of six straight points to pass it back to a dozen. Charlie Turner Thorne will again take a timeout. 61 seconds left in regulation in this one. Washington appears to be getting back-to-back -back wins over ranked opponents and a share of the conference lead. And we welcome you back to Seattle. What everyone in the place thought was a timeout was instead a technical foul on the Arizona State bench. The Huskies hit one of two free throws, and they now lead it by 13. So we resume action with... Arizona State getting the ball at midcourt and then trailing by a Baker's dozen. Levin's behind a double screen for three. She has not had a big second half. In fact, has not hit a field goal in the second half of play. And Payne gets fouled in the backcourt. And Payne doing the smart thing, taking the rebound and covering it up. She's her best free throw shooter, 80% on the season. She wants to head to the line and pat her stats a little bit. So the Huskies continue their run of play. They'll make it five out of their last six, and they'll have Northwest rivals to take on next week. They'll do the bus trip down to Oregon, the five-hour bus trip. Corvallis first, then Eugene against the Ducks, who have been stumbling a bit of late before three straight home games, and then closing it out on the road against the L.A. schools. Levin's forcing it and a whistle called. Boy, the defenders were there in perfect position that time. They call it against Sheets, and that is the fifth foul on Leanne. 13 point day for Leanne Sheets. Six of 10 from the floor and four rebounds as well. Kelly O'Neill will come back in for the senior from Tumwater High. 
Well, Leanne, she's a solid game today, really established herself in the second half as part of that big Husky run to start the second half. Down low on the blocks and gave them that inside presence that they needed. Levin's just not getting untracked in this second half at all. The Sun Devils have just six players in the scoring column for the ball game. And it's been Melody Johnson and Precious Little else for ASU in the second half. Levin's called for the off the ball foul. That is her third, and Andrea Lalam will go to the line. You know, a lot of people were surprised coming into this game that Arizona State and Washington were the ones playing for the Pac-10 lead. We talked to Charlie Turner Thorne before the game, and she said to us, and we set a goal as we wanted to be Pac-10 cha champs this season. That was our goal, and we're not surprised we're here, and neither is June Doherty. She said before the season as well, hey, I think we can be Pac-10 champs in a, in a in a year in which the Pac-10 is very competitive, one through 10, but probably not as strong at the top, but it has been. It's been anybody's year to win the Pac-10 title. The Sun Devils found out a lot about themselves when they went to Hawaii early in the season and played well there, and also went head-to-head -head with Tennessee in a great ball game, narrowly losing that one to the balls. Levins can't hit again. Lalam the board. She'll let him tackle her. Well, there's a good possibility when the polls roll around next week, you might just see the Washington Huskies getting very close to the top 25. They've been in about the top 30. Their RPI ranking is number 16 because of the difficulty of their schedule. All of which bodes well for June Doherty's team and the spectrum of postseason play. Well, you always say to get in the NC2A tournament, you need to have at least a minimum of 17 games. If you don't win their conference, they're almost there. 15 and with this win over Arizona State today, they just need a few more wins, and they almost are guaranteed a shot in the tournament. If you win the Pac-10, you don't need any amount of wins. You're automatically guaranteed a spot. June Doherty able to clear the bench. Sarah Duncan and Emily Autry coming in. Bench a little shorter this week. Giaconda Mendiola not dressing still as she's still recovering from thumb surgery. Lalam with the board. Autry, O'Neill wasn't looking for the ball. She was ahead of the pack, but instead the Huskies will hang on to it and they'll be able to run out the clock. Elise, this has been an impressive outing and they weathered several comeback attempts from ASU. It was an impressive victory for the Huskies because they they weren't exactly hot from the three-point line, and they still pulled out a solid victory. And the bench up as Duncan goes back door and gets the basket. Just her fifth field goal of the season. And you know they love it when the subs are able to score. June Doherty takes a timeout to bring two more substitutions in so that Pimley and Reichman can finish out the game. Well, Sarah Duncan, the emotional leader, she's been the most inspirational player on the team for a few years now. She's always up and down, yelling on the bench, cheering on her teammates. Great practice player. I've seen her in practice go off her. A lot of threes in a row, and she's just excited to get in, get a little PT. She's a senior. This is her last go-round. She wants to get in that game and make a contribution. You know the bench is loving it. She's been there all year, no matter how much playing time she's got. She's remained supportive, positive influence. And that's tough to do when you want to play, but she knows it's best for the team. This game was at 65-59 at one point. Since then, it's been a 14-1 Washington run. They close it with the block of Johnson. And the Washington Huskies have a share of the Pac-10 conference lead with seven games remaining. A big win for the Huskies here at home. You knew they had to get it done at home. Sun Devils in their seven-game winning streak. What a good, well-played game today here in Seattle. Washington sweeps the Sun Devils. June Doherty's team now 8-3 in conference play. We'll be back with more from Seattle after this.